We are at the home of Doña Francisca and Don Francisco, in a rural neighborhood in Colombia. Even though they don't live far from town, they never had the money to connect their wastewater to the municipal sewage system. So all they have just drains straight into the ground, unfiltered, right in front of their house. Since they grow their commercial coffee right next to it, they run a high risk of contamination and lose lots of easily reusable water in a region that regularly completely runs out of the life-enabling liquid. You might want to build an off-grid home without contaminating your environment, or simply increase the water efficiency of your house. But either way, how can you do that without having to spend hundreds of dollars on costly technological filters? This is where incredibly simple biofilters shine. In this video, we'll talk about how they work, different use cases, and at the end, how to properly calculate the size you need for your own system. So what makes this filter bio, and what exactly does it filter? In wastewater, we differentiate between black water and gray water. Gray water is wastewater generated from household activities like washing dishes, laundry, and bathing. Black water, on the other hand, comes from toilets and contains harmful pathogens. With a simple biofilter, we can easily treat gray water, not black water, to be reused for irrigation, flushing toilets, and other non-potable purposes. Without filtration, the salts and surfactants contained in gray water, coming for example from detergents and soaps, can be very disruptive to hormonal systems in animals and humans, kill good bacteria in the soil, or bind minerals, which are then missing in our drinking water. So, how do biofilters achieve this? Biofilters usually consist of several layers. A top layer of phytoremediation plants, a layer of organic material like leaves and sticks of various sizes, and a layer of gravel or sand at the bottom. These layers work together to filter and purify the gray water. Let's look at it step by step. When gray water enters the biofilter, it first passes through the top layer of plants. The roots of these plants absorb nutrients and provide oxygen to beneficial bacteria. These bacteria break down organic matter and pollutants in the water. The gravel layer then acts as a physical filter, trapping larger particles and debris while also providing a surface for other beneficial bacteria to grow, which further break down different organic contaminants. The compost layer, rich in organic matter, further enhances microbial activity and store water and nutrients. The coolest thing is that you can find the phytoremediating plants planted on top of the biofilter in your own garden. Pretty much any plant with the sort of wet ring structure you find in banana palms, for example, should work. But honestly, any local plants growing in wet areas will probably do the trick as well. You can easily find more tips about this online. On top of that, you can dig the hole necessary for the filter yourself and fill it with organic matter directly from your property. The only thing needed from the outside will be gravel and the pipes transporting the water from your house to the filter. This keeps the costs incredibly low. And while technological filters might have more of a plug and play feeling, when they break, you either need to get a technician to fix it, or directly buy a new one. Biofilters, on the other hand, might be a bit finicky in the beginning, but once the system is established, they are easily maintained. The only thing needed is a regular top-up of the organic matter, and every few years an exchange of the gravel layer. Biofilters are used at all different levels. I've seen one being used at a massive hotel which reintegrated the filtered water to flush the toilets, they are used in cities to increase green spaces and biodiversity, or as off-grid solutions for family homes. They can release the treated water straight into the ground to refill the aquifers or be collected for direct reuse. To help Dania Francisca and her family prevent the contamination risk and save water, we, for example, built a banana circle filter that infiltrates water into the ground at the top of the hill so that it can filter through to the coffee plants below. At a different place of the property, we installed a bucket filled with gravel and covered it with plants to treat the water of a washing machine and make it available for the vegetable garden further down straight from a tap. Find a design that works for your use case online and try it out. To help you with the first step and realize how many liters of water you will be able to save, let's finish this video with a short calculation of your household daily usage. First, find the outflow speed of your tap water. Most places in the world release about 8 liters per minute. At my home in Colombia, it's a lot lower. But in Germany, we have about 9 liters per minute, I just calculated. Then find out the minutes you and potential other members of your household use water on a daily basis. For example, how long on average do you shower? 
and then multiply that with the number of people in your house. Let's say we have two people times five minutes each. That is 90 liters for showering per day. 90 liters of water. Then comes the kitchen usage for cooking. Let's say about 15 minutes of constant tap water running for cleaning vegetables and then later on washing pots. Here, you might want to check how much water your dishwasher uses instead or calculate the time that you need to wash dishes. Then there are other uses like washing your hands after going to the bathroom and brushing your teeth. So let's add another two minutes per person per day. So in total, four minutes. And finally, we have the things that we do once a week, like washing the laundry. There again, you can check your washing machine on how much water it uses each cycle. Usually it's somewhere between 30 and 90 liters. Let's say we have a super efficient one with 30 liters and two loads per week. That is 60 liters per week divided by seven to get daily usage, so about 8.5 liters per day. And finally, cleaning which might be another five minutes of running the tap constantly per week. So 45 liters divided by seven, which comes out at about 6.5 liters per day. So finally, we have 29 minutes of daily water usage by two people. So 261 liters plus the 15 liters from weekly use. That adds up to 276 liters of water used every single day. That's a lot, right? So do yourself a favor. Just treat it straight at your house so you can reuse it. Or petition your local water treatment facilities to check out this fantastic natural option. If you want more people to see this, like this video. I wish you a fantastic day. Let's regenerate the earth.